This week in the Die Cast Review Zone is a former NASCAR Spring Cup Series champion, a multiple times winner in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series this year, and my pick to be champion once again in 2015. Yeah, it's on box. Yeah, that's about as much as you need to know about the box. There's no dents or scratches. And this thing got smashed to pieces. Zingy, that's a good word. Oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> it's sloppy. I've seen paper customs on YouTube done better than this. Hello, race fans, and welcome to Die Cross Review Monday in association with Race Gear UK, who have once again supplied me with a fantastic NASCAR die cast. This one is available to you right now including a 15% discount if you quote Team Bomber Sports with your order, because we're nice like that, and Race Gear UK are awesome people. And uh, the diecast in the review zone today is of one of the most successful drivers in this season, and our most recent race winner, he won the Sylvania 300 this weekend at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, in a very interesting race, it was a very controversial one, it was a fascinating one for many reasons, it was quite an interesting race, uh, New Hampshire is not often the most action-packed of races, but um, it was a very interesting race, a very dramatic race, and in terms of the chase, uh, it's, it sets it up very nicely next week for Dover, which is the final race in the first round. I can't remember any of the names of the rounds. It's uh, basically, <laughs> anyone who remember watching uh, or has watched me throughout the years will know, I've never been a fan of the chase format, but I've kind of, for this current one, I've kind of been like, it's totally bananas and it's just sort of roll with it. It's total bonkers. And watching the race yesterday, it, it was very interesting to see just how stressful it is for the drivers involved. I mean, Matt Kenseth has now won five times this season, and that race yesterday seemed to be the most stressful for the lot. He got out of the car and literally was like wiping sweat off his brow, like, thank God for that, we're in the next round. That's, that's it. That's all he was racing for, to get into the next three races. But um, there will be a certain irony uh, if he wins the title this year, because in 2003 he won the title, if you remember, off of one race win. Next year, in 2004, we got the first ever chase. So it'd be ironic now if he finally wins the Chase Championship having won loads of races in a year. He is in fact my title pick as well. I, I can't look past him to win this year. Of Joe Gibbs Racing, they have been all crushing this year. He's been the strongest of the lot. He's been the most likely to win on any given weekend. I think Carl Edwards produces the goods on important weekends. I think Denny Hamlin's there or thereabouts. Carl Busch, I just think he's too inconsistent. And he's actually in trouble right now with his, uh, his uh, wreck at New Hampshire. So it'd be very interesting to see how he fights his way out of that hole at Dover if he can. But my picks for the final four are actually Kenseth, was it Edwards or Hamlin? I, I made this prediction on Downforce USA. I think I picked Kenseth, Hamlin, uh, no, did I pick Carl Busch? Anyway, Kenseth, Hamlin, Newman and Jimmy Johnson, with Kenseth being my pick to win the title. I can't look past him this year, and with that all in mind, let's have a look at the ride that he's got for this year. This is his Dollar General car, this has been one of the main ones. You'll also notice... This is, of course, the first 2015 Toyota I've had in the Diecast Review Zone. Obviously, you've seen these on other reviews around. But obviously, they take a little bit longer to get over here uh, to us Brits out in the wilderness. Um, uh, it, Britain is sometimes treated in NASCAR circles as, oh, it's that country that likes Formula 1 and thinks NASCAR is just rednecks turning left, so let's not give them anything. And then there's NASCAR fans in Britain like me, like, hello, we actually do like NASCAR, please be nice to us. Like, we've not got any Spin Master diecasts over here, which is a real shame. But let's just have a look at the front end. Uh, you can just see it in there. I think they've done a pretty solid job. I think this black wheel on the front is... It doesn't look too great, but if you look close enough... Uh, I don't know if it's showing on the camera. There is a sort of grill effect on there. It's not too good. I think you kind of need more detail on that to make the, the front end of the Toyotas this year look good. They have kind of been either panned or praised. They do look nice and aggressive, and I think in certain circumstances, especially on the, the Monster Energy number 54 in Xfinity, and on Martin Trix Jr.'s new Toyota for next year, I think they look great. In other circumstances, not so. So I think for the demands of mass die-cast production, I don't think the grill looks that great, but they've still done very well at reproducing the front end. And to be honest, the deep quality, much, much better this year. They are, Lionel across the board have improved. Although, just to say that, those, um, those hoop pins are just, they're about half a, they're about a millimetre or two off to the right, but hey, we'll, we can leave that, that's fine. Considering some of the atrocities we had last year, that's fine. Spin it around. It's quite a smooth, it's a quite a simple colour scheme, the Donner, Donner General one. There's not really much going on with it. Uh, it's just a simple yellow and black one with this stripe along the back, which I rather like. I like the fact that uh, uh, paint schemes are actually becoming a lot more simpler these days. For a while, they did get rather overcomplicated, and a lot of them still are. But sometimes something this simple can really work, and it really does. It's a bright vibrant shade of yellow, he's kind of made it his own over the last few years, which is crucial because the number 20 kind of struggled for an identity after Tony Stewart left it, and uh, 
Matt Kenseth's kind of made it his own over the last few seasons, having relocated there from Roush Racing. Uh, more Dollar General decals on the back. It's just, it's Dollar General all around. Dollar General. Some more Dollar General. More Dollar General. Yeah, some Dollar General there. Uh, some more Dollar General. There literally is nothing else on this car. You'd almost think Dollar General paid a lot to be on his car or something. Um, I can't think how they do that. But yeah, no, this is a Dollar General car doing what it says on the tin. There is literally no other sponsors on this car that I can see. There's a lot. Oh no, there's DeWalt. There's, <laughs> there's the tiniest DeWalt sticker there. I guess Dollar General like, Dwalt, sod off. You've got enough races where you're main sponsor for this car. We're having it for this one. Um, and I, if I remember right, he's won most of his races this year in this car. So clearly the bright yellow Dollar General car seems to be working rather well for him. But uh, this is a, it's a great die cast. I mean, I have to say, Lionel have pretty much been on their game this year for 2015 die cast. I wish I had some Spin Masters over here to compare. Uh, much like David Land has done quite a few times on his channel, which I totally advise you to subscribe to as well because he's awesome. Um, I hope that we somehow get Spin Masters over here fairly soon because I'd like to compare and it'd be nice to have competition. You know, and I wonder if Lionel stepped up their game uh, once Spin Masters came on the market last year and finally provided an alternative because back in the earlier days, I mean, even as far back as when I started Diecast Reviewing in 09, um, there were there was checkered flag sports, there was action, there was there was different kinds. I mean, action, which is now Lionel, were the dominant ones, but you got the feeling there was enough competition in the market to make sure that they kept their game strong and made the cars well. I mean, they used to do hood opening cars, super detailed ones, uh, but for a little while, Lionel, they were the only ones. So you got the impression last year that standards really badly slipped, and then Spin Master turned up, and they were like, oh. Damn, we've got some competition. We need to step back up, guys. And they really did. From the, from the tail end of last year through to now, they've been a lot stronger. And, and this is another great diecast. It's good to see they've nailed the new look of the Toyota. It looks great. Uh, I think the Toyota looks pretty mean. Uh, it can look pretty ugly uh, from certain angles. But then again, I like the old COT Dodge Charger, which a lot of people thought just looked like an angry bulldog that ran into a wall. So there you go. What do I know? But uh, this has been my diecast view. On oh, Matt Kenseth's number 20, Dollar General Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, which has been seen many times in Victory Lane this year, and I think it's not done yet. I have a feeling that you're going to see this car in Championship Victory Lane come Homestead. But then again, most of my predictions are often wrong, so if I've jinxed you, Matt, very sorry about that. Uh, I will see you on Wednesday for a very important announcement about a stop-motion race that this car will be in. It's one of the ones that was crowdfunded. It's the Great Britain 500. You will hear all the details on that one on Wednesday. Do not miss that. That's very important. And then on Friday, I'll have a NASCAR gaming video. I don't know if it'll be NASCAR 15. I, I might switch to a fortnightly schedule for that just because trying to do that game every week makes me want to bang my head against the wall repeatedly until I get brain damage. So I might alternate between, <laughs> might alternate between NASCAR 15 and NASCAR 07, which you'll remember I do have a series on. I was doing a... Uh, a chase series on that one, ironically. So I might go back to that for a bit because, hey, it's an infinitely more fun game. And I've also got some other plans for gaming stuff very soon, which you'll hear about in due course. But for now, this has been the Die Cross Review. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you have. And let me know your picks for the final four of the Chase for the Spring Cup 2015. After New Hampshire, it just got a hell of a lot more interesting. As if it wasn't dramatic enough as it stood. I'll see you next time, Bombers. Yeah.